cloudier and quiet today. Quiet ahead of an active system coming. Temperature at 28 right now. Those north and west winds continuing to keep things a bit breezy and cool out there. Temperatures will be dropping eventually down into the upper teens and low 20s tonight with clouds slowly clearing up. Tomorrow then, expecting a mostly cloudy sky again. Some light rain showers, even a little snow mix expected with south and east winds. Temperatures back into the 30s. Moving ahead here, our first area of low pressure passes to the north, keeping us in rain. It's the second one to the south that develops and moves north, bringing us the potential for some impacts. We'll talk about the timing of wintry weather in central Illinois, the impacts you can expect, and more as WCIA 3 News at 5 starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. It's been a violent year for one city in central Illinois. Now people are calling for the gun violence to end. And a woman is dead after an early morning shooting where police are in their investigation. And we told you about a crash that killed two women over the weekend. Now someone could be facing murder charges. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. Not continue this road with people shooting each other in the streets of Decatur. I mean, we had a 10 year old who was shot. City officials and peace activists are calling for an end to gun violence in Decatur. Good evening. I'm Jessica Coons in for Paul and Jennifer. Mothers who lost their sons to gun violence gathered at Decatur Central Park to mourn their loss and honor their memory. WCI3's Mark Maxwell is live now in Decatur with more on their calls for peace. Mark, a lot of concerned citizens are parents. Jessica, good evening. One mother wiped away tears as she recalled that fateful night in September when she received a dreadful phone call that her son had been shot. Today, she says police do have a list of suspects and some ballistic evidence, but little more that might bring her son's killer to justice. Today, she joined more than a dozen others, along with faith leaders and city officials braving the cold weather to plead with the city's youth to put the guns down. She hopes that no other parent ever has to endure the pain she's been through. We have so many reports of shots fired, shots fired, and I know many parents are up at night calling their children to see where they are at. And we just pray for peace. That's the, that's the number one reason we're out today. We're just praying in our homes and everywhere for peace. We're gonna get the prayer going. These prayers today, just the start. City leaders still looking for solutions and ways they might help police bring killers to justice or, better yet, prevent the gunshots before they ever ring out. One mother suggested if the city's police force can't do it on their own, perhaps it's time for federal law enforcement to step in and help out. City officials did note an increase in gun violence in 2020. That data, of course, not official, not complete yet for this calendar year. But one councilman suggested perhaps a rise in joblessness or desperation could be driving people toward violence. The police department did not comment on today's event. They said they were unaware of it before it began. But the list of people that was written out of people who had been shot and killed in Decatur starting in 2018 until today was four pages long. And Jessica, as they read those names aloud, that process alone took five minutes tonight. Reporting in Decatur, Mark Maxwell, WCI3, your local news leader. All right, Mark, thank you. Now, the rise in crime is not isolated to Decatur. A recent report found murder rates are rising in many American cities. Research from a University of Missouri St. Louis professor found homicides spiked 42% this summer and were 34% higher this fall. A woman is dead after she was shot in her car this morning in Champaign. Police say Lisa Lewis was parked outside of a building at Nantucket Cove apartments. The 36-year-old was shot several times. She later died at the hospital. WCI3's Courtney Bunting is live at the Champaign Police Department. So, Courtney, what can you tell us so far about that investigation? Well, Jessica, I talked to Lewis's son, and he said that she was in her vehicle getting ready to head to work at the time that this happened. Now, her son, Deriante, or rather, Deranje Lewis says he had just said goodbye to her and then had gone inside the apartment and just uh, several minutes later he heard those gunshots. Now he said that he didn't know at the time that that's what they were but he went outside to check on his mother and found her slumped over in her car. Deranje says he believes someone had been following his mom and knew her schedule. It happened so quick and so fast 
it was planned. I know it was planned. There's no way that my mom would just go out to work any day and just get shot in her parking lot. Like that's something that's planned and someone and it's personal to someone because they wouldn't have done it for no reason. I also talked to a neighbor who says they'll be more careful from now on going home, going inside and out of their apartment, but they told me they weren't necessarily surprised that this happened at that complex. They said they noticed arguing the night before, but said they didn't think anything of it because they'd also heard similar things on other nights as well whenever nothing happened the following morning. Now, Lewis does have four children, one of them who you heard from, her son. He told me that their grandfather from now on will be caring for them since they have, of course, just lost their mother. Live in Champaign, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Thank you, Courtney. Police have not made any arrests yet in that case. They're asking anyone with video footage of that area to contact them. We have an update on Saturday's deadly crash in Alney. Police say a man was booked on a preliminary charge of murder. Police say 60-year-old Michael Maddox ran off the road and hit the outdoor patio at Deuce's Wild Saloon. Two women, 48-year-old Deanne Richardson and 69-year-old Judy Jordan, were on on that patio. They both died. Maddox also faces charges of aggravated DUI and driving without a license. We reached out to the state's attorney several times today, but they have refused to comment on that case. Champaign County Crime Stoppers are looking for tips on a burglary. They say someone broke into a construction site on East Springfield near South 3rd in Champaign. It happened between December 19th and December 21st. The suspect was captured on surveillance cameras and appears to have a tattoo on the right side of his neck. Police say he stole several construction tools that are valued at more than $2,500. If you know anything, you're asked to call police. People are stepping up to help a woman who lost everything in a house fire. This happened almost two weeks ago in Jacksonville. Robert Hembro died in the fire. His girlfriend, Beth Hankins, made it out alive. She was released from the hospital just in time for Christmas, but her neighbor says she still needs to replace a lot of essentials. Got out in her nightgown, and that's all she has left in the world. And her daughter said she had to go buy her slippers just so her feet weren't so cold in the hospital. And I actually saw her early this morning. She's heading to uh, the store to buy her only pair of shoes that she'll have now. People have already raised nearly $2,000 for her. If you'd like to help out, you can go online to WCIA.com. It was a busy morning for some in Mattoon. More than 50 people had to evacuate their homes for a gas leak. This happened on Pine Avenue between 24th and 26th Streets. People living there were bused somewhere else to wait for the all clear. We talked to crews this morning about what they had to do. Since it's in the sewer system, um, we're checking residences in the 2500 block of Pine and Western to see if any gas is coming up into the residence. Officials told us city crews caused the leak. They hit a sewer line while they were working in that area. Here's a look at today's coronavirus numbers. The state is reporting more than 4,400 new cases. Another 105 people have died. The positivity rate in Illinois is 8.7%. There are more than 4,200 people in the hospital. In Region 3, 78% of ICU beds are being used. In Region 6, it's 63%. President Trump has signed off on a COVID relief package, but some lawmakers are still pushing to get more money for you. Plus, a massive explosion shattered a peaceful Christmas morning in Nashville. We'll have the latest on that large-scale investigation.